Okay, so we are at the point where I'd like to cover the photocell or the analog sensor. Up to this point we've worked with the push button switch only and it's either pressed or not pressed. Um, that's a digital device because there's only two states that it can be in. It's either pressed, which is a one, or not pressed, which is a zero. So only two states have been. And that was covered right in here. To check the status of the pins, we used either one of these two commands here. All right, and we had the LEDs either turn on and off, which were the commands listed in this area. Um, now what we want to do is we want to work with an analog sensor. Now with an analog sensor, we're going to get more than just two conditions, either on or off, but we can have a variety of different conditions. Uh, in the case of the light sensor, it's going to detect the level of the light. And it, we can't just say that, yes, there's light or no, there's not. I mean, I suppose we could ask that question, but the reality is, is that we can have all sorts of different intensities of light. Uh, we ha if we had a, a, a light dimmer, as many of you probably do in your house, it, we could increase the light or decrease the amount of light. Um, it's not just a simple lots of light or no light at all. We can have a variety of levels. And that's what we have these analog sensors for, so that we can detect different varieties of levels. So to do that, um, we're going to use uh, the light sensor, which is connected up to port 4, which is located right here. Here's the light sensor, and you can see there's a 4 next to it. So it's on port 4. Okay. And let's see here, what we want to first do. I'm going to show you how we can just use the pickaxe board here to see what the level of the light is. And what it's going to do, it's going to translate the level of light into a number value. So we'll go ahead and just download a program so that you can actually see that. And you can use this as a test program too, so that if you'd like to determine um, what number is associated with a certain light level and use that as the basis for writing your program or use that number in your program, you can. All right. So uh, in your icon sheet here, whoops, okay, where it is located is in the other. Okay, and you'll see here's these two commands that we're going to go over today, which is read ADC and debug. Okay, so. Here's my pickaxe. Under Other, I'm going to select Read ADC, which is going to read an analog device. And now an analog device, again, that's where your resultant answer could be more than just a 0 or a 1, but it could be lots of different numbers. Now, to set this to read the photo cell, which is on port 4, I'm going to click on it. And then down here, I'm going to click on 4. Now, what is B0? Uh, I like to think of this as a name that's printed on a shoebox. So imagine you have a lot of different shoeboxes, and each of the shoeboxes have different names printed on them. This particular shoebox happens to have the name B0 printed on it. And what we can do is we can write down a number and put it inside of that shoebox. And I could call on any person I wanted to, and I could say, hey, Johnny, you go tell me what number is in box B0. And you walks over to box B0, opens up the box, looks at the number, and tells me what number's in there. At any point in time, it could tell tell Johnny to go put a different number in box B0. And he could go do that. And I could go ask, you know, Sally. I'd say, Sally, go tell me what number's in box B0. She could walk over to box B0, open it up, and tell me what number's in there. You know, to further that, I could say, um, Sally, if the number's over 50, I want you to do 10 jumping jacks. And she would go over to the box, open it up, look at the number, and it happens to be 25. So she doesn't do any jumping jacks. Had the number have been over 50, she would have done 10 jumping jacks. So we can make decisions based on the numbers that are in these, so to speak, shoeboxes. Um, these shoeboxes, they're not actually called shoeboxes. What these are is these numbers, B0, or the names on the boxes, as I'd like to say, those are variables because the numbers that we put in those shoeboxes can change. Um, so the variables can change. So um, notice here that I have a wide variety of names that um, I can call my variables or different names that I have on my shoeboxes, however you want to look at it. So I am going to basically read the value of light that's on port 4 and put that number in box B0 or put it in variable B0. So it's going to read the variable or read the pin on port 4, take the value, put it in variable B0. Okay. And then 
we are going to have it print that number to the screen. And to print the number to the screen, we're going to call it debug. We're going to use debug. Um, what debug's going to do is it's going to print the number that's in box B0, or it's going to print the number that's variable B0. Okay? If it were a different box I wanted to show, you could select it down here, but we're using B0. Okay? And then we're going to have it repeat. So what's going to happen? It's going to read the variable or read the photo cell on 4, stick the number in B0, then it's going to print B0 to the screen. It's going to repeat this process over and over and over. So if I click on program, you can go ahead and try this. Let it download and then you'll get a box that's going to pop up on the screen that looks like mine. Now I have the lights on right now. They're not all on, only half of the lights that I have in my room are on. And you notice right here, this is showing the contents of B0. It's 195 and I'm not covering that photo cell up, the light's hitting it. Now if I cover my hand over it, notice that the number drops because now it's darker. So the light level that's represented now is 50. Okay, so uncovered, covered. Now my hand's kind of far away and I keep bringing it closer, closer, closer. As I get it closer, the light that's hitting it gets less and less and less and the number goes down. If I put my thumb over it as best as I can, the number goes way down. Okay, so I can detect, detect different values of light. So this is just a helpful tool in determining a number. So I'm going to put my hand over it and I can see with my hand over it it's 66 or 67. With my hand not over it it's almost 200. So I'm going to write a program now that is going to turn on the lights if the number goes below, below 100. Well, yeah, 100 should be safe. Okay, so close that program out. And I'm going to get rid of the debug for now. Okay, all right. So, first thing I want to do, read the value of the light. If we need to make a decision based on that. So, uh, it's reading the, fo the photo cell, which is on port 4. It's going to stick the number in variable B0. Now we need to make a decision. And decisions are made with ifs over here. Now we already did the ifs if the pin is pressed or if the button's pressed or not so we know these. We're going to work with variables which is another decision and these are the three things that we can use. And this is going to say that if the variable in, in this sh on this sheet it just shows the number of 150 but we're going to change it to 100 as I mentioned. So we're going to have it go something like this. If the value of variable B0 is greater than a hundred. Okay. If it's greater than a hundred, that's going to mean it's light. Okay. So is it is it greater than a hundred if it's light? Well, yeah. So if it is, we want the LEDs to be off. So following the yes rung, we're going to select. We'll pick three of the LEDs here. Change them to zero, one, and two. Oops. All right, so here it reads it. We'll just say it's light out, so it'll be over 100. So is B0 greater than 100? Sure. Yeah, yes, if it's light out. So it's going to turn on the LEDs. No, that's not what I want. I only want them on if it's less than that. So I'm going to move those over to here. So if it's greater than 100, they need to be off. So the yes should actually have three that turn them off. So low 0, low 1, and low 2. And then I'll connect those. Alright, so let's say it's light. So let's just say the number we have is 150. Question, is the number that's in box B0 greater than 100? Yeah, it's 150. So it's going to follow this rung. It's going to make sure that the lights are off. They don't need to be on. It's light out. So they're off. It's going to come back to the very beginning. It's going to read the value again. As long as it stays light or as long as the number is over 100, it's going to follow this path. Now if I cover it up and the number drops below 100, what's the answer? If Let's just say to 50, what's the answer to this question going to be? Is the number greater than 100? Well, if the number is 50, it's not greater than 100. So it's going to follow this rung down here. So it'll turn on the LEDs and 
we'll have it go back to the beginning. So as long as the number stays below 100, then it's going to follow this path. All right, if we simulate it, um, I'm not going to use this before I had you, I showed you this school experimenter board, so when I simulated it, oops, you got something that looked like this up here. Ended up having troubles with, with that, and it appears to be a problem with the program. So um, I'm going to get rid of this, and instead of it saying school experimenters in the simulation, I'm just going to choose none. So the photo cells attached up to port 4, and what I can do here is I can change that value, and the LEDs are on 0, 1, and 2. So right now, because the number is less than 100, it's 20, the lights are on. Okay. Now watch, Just this is just to test the program. If I bring the number over 100, you'll see that it's going to follow the other path. Okay. The number is greater than 100, so it takes this path. So if you program this now for real, we'll see how it works. Go ahead and try that. I'll make sure that mine works. Okay, and mine seems to be working good. When I have it covered, it's below. All right. Now, I don't have anything on the screen. What you what you could actually do here to change this program up just a little. I'm going to put in a debug. So I'll go back to debug and what I want it to do is actually show me the value that B0 is on the screen while it's running. Now normally I, I wouldn't want to keep the debugs in there because it slows the program down, but when you're trying things out and testing things, it's okay to use debugs. And you got to consider the fact too that when you disconnect the programming cable from this you'll no longer be connected to the computer and it will no longer give you that information on the screen. So right now the number you can see is 195 so my lights are off. I'm covered and the number is hmm. now mine's actually acting a little erratic with the debugs in here. Yeah, it's not working the way that I would intend it with these debugs. It could be a problem with the program, I'm not exactly sure. We won't worry about that because we don't actually even need these debugs in here. So wish I could give you an explanation for that, but I cannot. So we'll take the debugs out and it'll work just fine without them. Okay.